what is Oxford today? The rowdy setting for Brideshead Revisited or a tranquil oasis of learning in a troubled world? Its name is familiar. Oxford English, Oxford Marmalade, Oxford Bags, Oxford Shoes, the Morris Oxford. It is also the home of Inspector Morse. The city can seem like one gigantic film set and the older colleges make a good living out of film companies. They can do that, of course, because the city looks so wonderful, full of beautiful buildings. Which is why Pevsner came here almost 40 years ago to write one of his celebrated guides. Oxford, wrote Sir Nicholas Pevsner, has the most telling skyline of England. Though dreaming spires is nonsense in every respect. Nonsense indeed in that it's a skyline of towers and domes as well. A skyline of both Gothic and classic. Oxfordshire was one of the last of the celebrated and essential volumes on the buildings of England. And perhaps Pevsner left the best until last because surely no other city in Britain can boast such a concentration of magnificent architecture. You need a guide because Oxford is difficult to get to know. So many of its treasures are hidden away inside the colleges that make up the university, some of which charge heavily to let you through the gate, especially, as I have discovered, with a film crew. Oxford can seem a hostile and an insular place to an outsider. Like me, I was at another university over in the Fens. It can seem a place of privilege and pleasure. And many people today think of it in terms of the drunken antics of the bright young things of the 1920s. As Evelyn Waugh described the colleges, filled with the sound of English county families baying for broken glass, crimson and roaring. <laughs> But the university was founded not in a vain attempt to educate the idle sons of the aristocracy, but rather for young men training for the priesthood. Oxford, like all the ancient universities, had its origins in the church. So the story begins not in a college, but with a great church building, one that is much older than the university itself. This was originally a monastery church, dedicated to Frideswide, a local saint, whose shrine is here. Now a cathedral, tucked away inside a later college. It was built to serve a community of Augustinian monks. Although it is small compared with most of the other great cathedrals of England, Christchurch Cathedral is like them in having been built and rebuilt at different times and in different styles. At first, one notices the sober, impressive, heavy round arches and thick columns of Norman. But look up, and amazing structural games are being played in the elaborate perpendicular Gothic vaults. To discuss this very confusing building, I'm meeting with the verger, Jim Godfrey. It's a very peculiar building, isn't it? And you have the combination of these very odd Norman arcades with lower arches and upper arches split. And then the, the weirdest, the most fantastic of late Gothic vaults all together. Yes. And they work. And it works, yeah. yes. 